Growing numbers of foreign fighters are traveling to Syria to take part in the conflict. We've known that. It's been going on since the start. But in just the first three months of this year, more Britons went to Syria to fight than traveled there in the whole of 2013. CNN spoke to a senior anti-terror official at the Metropolitan Police about why they are concerned. I've been very concerned to see the number of young people who are traveling to Syria, uh, some of them with the best of motives, but they're arriving in a country where no one uh, is there to look after them, uh, where they could be preyed on by the terrorist groups that we know are operating out there, and they could get themselves into the most awful danger, and that's extremely worrying. So the most important message from today is we've brought together a group of women who are all concerned about protecting young people in the same way. If family members are worried, if they come forward and talk to us, we can help and support them to persuade their loved ones not to travel. Now, initially, of course, as you said, this is about safeguarding, not monitoring, not necessarily a criminal investigation, but if somebody does go over there, then it does, as it's part of a counter-terror, you know, um, operation to try and prevent this kind of a thing. What are your concerns about them coming back, and what's the red line for those who might travel to Syria? Well, it's not simply about people coming back. It's a, I'm concerned for people who are fighting and training to fight whilst they're out in Syria. They're not welcomed by the Syrian people, uh, and they're, they're learning to do things that they should not be doing. Of course, if they come back, we will need to investigate that. Um, some of them will never be a threat to the UK or to citizens abroad, but some of them may be, and I have seen worrying signs that make me think that some people who are out there, who we know are being radicalised, may come back and commit terrorist acts. Are we seeing the number of people travelling to Syria growing, and how do you convince them not to go when they are, believe it's a just cause? Yes, we are seeing the number of people travelling growing, and that's of great worry. And I know that they think this is a just cause, and I think this is a just cause. People really want to alleviate the suffering of the Syrian people. What I want to convince them, though, is but that by going in person, and particularly in fighting, uh, that's not the way to uh, alleviate that suffering. And there are better ways that they can help. There's the view of the police. Now, Talia Ahmad is with the Muslim Council of Britain, and he told CNN distrust between the police and the Muslim community could pose problems with this new campaign. He also warned against jumping to conclusions about so-called extremism. The reason why police is not suitable for this is because since 9-11 and since 7-7, there has been an increased suspicion and mistrust that has developed about the police, and particularly about the counter-terrorism strategy pursued by the police. And it is for this, for this reason that every time police get involved into something like this, people will become suspicious. Different people understand rad radicalization to be different things. And if you look at the prevailing narrative at the moment about Islam and Muslims in, in Britain, for example, the trouble we have is people, when they talk about radicalization and extremism within the Muslim community, they often conflate it with, say, for example, conservative practices within certain, uh, Muslim, certain section of the Muslim community. Now, you cannot put together somebody's conservatism with a potential risk of violent extremism. So we need to be very clear about what are we talking about. Now, violent extremism is utterly abhorrent, and we have to challenge it head on. But at the same time, we cannot squeeze the public space for Muslims to express their faith and express their honestly held views about, say, for example, foreign policy. Syria is a very, very complicated situation, and there are people here who have families and active links there. And they are lost. The tragedy that is going on in Syria, many people are really lost as to how they are going to help and how, what can they can do to play a part in this. And they're afraid that what the authorities are doing is squeezing or limiting their ability uh, to do much in Syria in the, in the, under the pretext of terrorism.